Hi everyone and welcome to our How to Get Started with Coding workshop. My name is Marina Lee and I'm the Executive Director of Citratech and we are so excited to have you guys here. Um, I already took a peek at Zion's presentation and I can already tell the content will be so amazing and I'm sure you guys will enjoy it too. And I'm actually coding an iOS app right now too, so I'm really looking forward to hearing from her. But before we get started, I wanted to quickly introduce Citrotech first. So our mission is to empower minorities in STEM-related STEM careers, and our resources include videos, blogs, newsletters, um, and workshops just like this one for students. Since we have a lot of information here, feel free to take a screenshot of this, but we'll also be sending out the recordings. So don't worry if you didn't quite get all of this. If you would like to get in touch with us, be sure to follow us on our Instagram, which is our most active platform. We have so many more exciting opportunities and events coming up, so be sure to give us a follow so you'll never miss an update. We also have our link tree, which contains all of our links. And also here is the link to our website. If you would like to request a workshop topic or a specific speaker, please fill out this suggestion box linked right here. And finally, we have our feedback survey for this workshop. So make sure to fill this out um, after the workshop. And this form also gives the opportunity to leave a thank you note to Zion. And I'll be forwarding all of your notes to her and I'm sure she'll be super excited to read all of your notes. And we'll also be sending this link in the chat towards the end. So without further ado, let's pass it on to Zion to get this workshop started. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm uh, quickly screen share. Okay, so today's workshop is on how to get started with coding. So first, so I'm Zion Asamoda. So I live in Southern California. I'm a high school junior and in high school, I'm mostly like involved with activities that deal with women empowerment and coding. And outside of school, I really like to dance and develop iOS apps along with playing basketball on my school's team. So first, how is my coding journey? So at age eight, I was introduced by my cousin um, on Code Academy to learn how to code in HTML and CSS. And then um, early in 2019, because I was gonna take a computer science course or to jump into another computer science course, I had to take a Java placement test. So from there on, I learned how to code in Java and I'm still coding in that today. And then my most prominent language is um, Swift 5, which is the language that's used for iOS app development. And so I've been using this a lot recently and I actually use this to um, uh, enter a national competition called the Congressional App Challenge, which I'll be getting into later today. And um, currently I'm learning Python along with machine learning. So today we're gonna to be going over what is coding. So we're gonna be talking about what coding is and why it's so important today. And then second, we're gonna be um, going over finding your purpose and learning the effort it takes for you because it's very important to find your motivation when you're coding and learning about how much effort you're going to be putting into coding. So, and then I'm gonna be going over the best methods of learning how to code. Everyone is different. So everyone's gonna have a different method or way of learning how to code. And so I'm gonna be going over the best methods for you based on your learning style or the way, you're, the way you decide to learn. And then four, obviously, finding your starting point. And we're gonna um, end up finding the best way for you to start based on your circumstances. So first, I'm just gonna start with a little inspiration. So um, if you're working on something that you really care about, you don't have to be pushed, the vision pulls you. And this is by Steve Jobs. So first we're gonna be going over what is coding. So what is just the general definition of coding, right? So coding is the process of giving a computer a set of instructions to follow. And this can be done using coding or programming languages. And there's many programming languages out there that relate to coding as well. So first, why is coding so important in the first place? Coding opens up more job opportunities, even if you don't have a degree. You can attend a boot camp, and then you can all also even major in coding related majors such as computer programming and computer science. Coding is just such a global and big thing. Like coding is just super flexible to the extent that there are so many ways to get started and make a career out of it. Nowadays, most jobs are looking for someone who has the skills necessary to do well at that job, not necessarily a degree. Um, second, coding entails skills that are very important in the 21st century. Um, no matter what field you decided to study, it's highly recommended that you take at least one coding class 
um, because let's say you were to major in, I don't know, business and you needed a website for it. How do I make that website? Coding, coding is just everywhere, regardless of what you decide to do. And then um, third, coding boosts many skills such as problem solving and um, creative thinking. So uh, detecting problems and issues and breaking them into different aspects for the best solution is one of the best elements of coding. The more you code, the more your brain will get accustomed to solving many problems, which can be very helpful in other aspects of your life outside of coding. And like for creative thinking, to start coding, you need to find a creative idea that you're gonna code, right? And then when you put your mind into something or have a strong idea you wanna pursue, coding allows you to put the idea into the execution. And uh, the more you practice doing this, the more your creative um, thinking expands. And so it's just a really great thing. Um, and then lastly, coding teaches you how to grow and learn from your mistakes. So coding has, so when you're starting something new, no matter what, even if it's not coding, you're gonna run into mistakes and that's perfectly okay. But it's just how you overcome those mistakes. And even like, even though coding is like, you have mistakes and you eventually fix them, this has actually helped me outside of like outside of coding because now I know how to overcome problems even and not to give up on them. And so, yeah. And so the, some of the benefits of coding, there are a great demand of coding related jobs today um, too. There are many coding and programming languages to choose from based on your preferences. There are so many coding languages out there. Like I can bet you someone is making a coding language right now. It's just, there's just so many popular ones. Coding will never get old. There's always something new to learn when it comes to coding. And so, yeah. And then three, you can become self-employed and start your own business. So for example, I'm not a freelance coder, but I do freelancing, but there's websites just as freelancer.com and Fiverr where you can like make an income as a coder and not like work under anyone. You can be your own boss, which is such a great thing about coding. You don't need a college degree either. You can also just take boot camps or just self-study. There's just so many ways to um, get a career when it comes to coding. And so many people who are new to coding, to the coding world often think that coding and programming are the same thing. But the truth is, is that these are two different concepts. So that the question arises, what is the difference between coding and programming? So first, what is programming, right? So programming is the process of developing and executing a machine-based program that is implemented with no errors. And so here I have a little uh, chart that kind of shows the differences and I'll be going over that right now. So coding, writing, um, it's writing or translating code for a computer program, while programming is creating instructions to make an application work. And when you code, you're referred to as a coder, but when you program, you're referred to as a programmer. And one thing about coding is that you're following source co code and or instructions. But when it comes to programming, you're not limited to coding, but also involved in architecture design, testing and bugging, debugging. So like, for example, when you talk about programming, there's just so many aspects you can go into. It's just not one aspect. Maybe you want to um, be an app tester. You can have that. Maybe you want to actually be the programmer. That's OK, too. Let's say you want to work on front end developing, which we'll get onto later. You can as well. There's just so many different aspects to programming, and it's such a global thing as well. And so now the similarities between the two. So coding and programming, obviously, you know, technology, they're very related. And uh, coding and programming can be done on computers. Like, yes, it can be done on other devices, maybe like my iPad, for example. Um, but that's mostly for block coding. But if we're going to do literal coding, like writing lines, you need to have a computer. Um, and what these both do, they're both for the performance of machines or application. So let's say you have a, you're running an application on your computer right now, and it's acting really slow. What can you do to fix that? You can code. You can kind of change its efficiency, and it just it shows how powerful coding and programming are together too. So. And so now, so I'm going to be giving six careers in coding, but let me just pick, make this straight. There are so many careers there out for coding. Maybe you don't predominantly like just coding. Maybe you like coding and business. You can become a computer systems analysis. There's just so many careers out there. So the careers I'm giving, you're not just limited to these as well. So, okay, the first one is a web developer. And so what a web developer is responsible for is creating and maintaining websites. The average salary is about 73K and the most common education. So when you see degrees here, it doesn't mean you have to have these degrees, but it's just like the overall percentage of people who like um, go into these careers. And so again, so most common education is an associate's degree and it's projected growth 10 years from now is 13%. Um, for a computer systems engineer, a computer system engineer is responsible for identifying solutions 
to complex application problems. And so the salary is about 88K and the most common education is a bachelor's degree and it's projected growth 10 years from now is 9%. Um, a computer systems analysis is responsible for merging a company's business and information technology initiatives. So this average salary for this is about 90K and the most common education is a bachelor's degree and the projected growth 10 years from now is also 9%. So the next career is a front end developer, which I kind of referred to before. Um, and they're responsible for implementing web designs using encoding. And the average salary is about 92K. Um, the common education is about just degree. And this one probably has like the largest um, projected growth, which is 27%. Um, an app developer, which is responsible for creating applications on the phone. Um, the average salary is about 84K and the education is bachelor's degree and it has projected growth of 22%. And I wanna make this straight really clearly. So when we say app developer and app, there's, apps can be made with a bunch of different things. There could be Android applications, there can be iOS applications. And so like, for example, I'm aware that um, iOS like developers usually get about six figures, like 150K. But the reason why it's saying an app developer has 84K right now, this is just like a general app developer. So when I say app developer, this is a very broad topic, but if you're really interested in this, maybe you wanna make, I don't know, Android applications, I would suggest maybe looking up Android app developers because this um, these are just the general jobs, but you can, if you're very interested, you can always look into it more. And then to the next one, a backend engineer. And they're responsible for working on the server side code that controls the functionalities of a website. And they make about 115K and their common education is a bachelor's degree and its projected growth is about 17%. So now that we kind of went over the general basics, now how do you find your purpose and the effort it takes for you to learn how to code? But the first step, no matter what, you have to find your why to being a coder. Why do I want to start coding? Is it just because it's a hobby, maybe make a career out of it? It's going to be different for everyone. So we're going to be, maybe you don't even know your why to coding. Well, I'm going to break it down a little bit for you guys. So first, you have to ask yourself a couple questions. Why do I want to start coding? Let's say, I don't know, maybe I noticed some, an issue in my community. Maybe I wanna make an application or a website for it. Maybe that could be your initiative to why you wanna start learning how to code. This is gonna be different for everyone once again. And so you just ask yourself that question. Second, how would I structure my goal hierarchy? So in other words of saying this is that, how do I prioritize my goals, structure my goals? Let's say I make a list of five goals that I have and coding is my first goal. Obviously you're gonna put a little bit of time into maybe like, I don't know, four hours a day. This is going to be different for everyone, but let's say you just want to cope because maybe you know it's a good skill. Maybe it's not something you really want to pursue a career and that's perfectly okay too. That can also be a lower thing on your goal hierarchy, but you need to ask yourself this so you can know how much effort do I want to put into this. Is this really a high priority goal? Is this a low priority goal, medium priority? It depends on how you structure your goal hierarchy. Three, if you learned how to code, what would you do with that knowledge? Like for example, me, what would I do if I learned how to code? So I know how to code and I, what I like to do with coding, I just really like the fact that it um, helps you with my problem solving skills. Cause I just really love like math, STEM related um, topics. So that's really why I like coding. And I like to, to use my knowledge to help um, other parts like my community and other things, which is my why for that. But you have to ask yourself, why do, what do I want to do with this knowledge? What it, why is it so important to me? And then four, what attracts me the most about coding? Like for me, like I already said, the problem solving aspect, but what attracts you, right? Um, five, are you willing to put in the effort to learn how to code? When you're learning how to code, this is, might be a little big step for you. So you have to really like break it down. How, do you wanna put a lot of time into this? Do you have enough time to put in time into this? If you really wanna have time to put in this into this, you have to clear up space, right? So you just have to ask yourself, how much do I wanna code? Why do I wanna code? And let that drive you. And so now I'm going to be going over the different ways you can study or learn how to code. So you can do self-study, which is about six to 12 months. You can do a college degree, which is about four or more years, or a boot camp that's two to six months. And even though these are the average time it takes, it's different for everyone, depending on how much time you want to put into it. Like it's saying self-study is about six to 12 months. But for me, because I was so interested in iOS app development, for example, it took me about like three months. It's going to be different for everyone, but I just want to give you guys the average statistics of how um, how long each method of study would take. And so now it's very important to find the real reason why, um, behind why you wanna start coding. Finding this out will allow you to stay motivated throughout your coding journey. It's difficult to start your coding journey without having something to drive you towards achievements, right? So first, let's figure out how should I stay motivated? What can motivate me to start coding, right? So first, be realistic about your goals. If anything, start small and expand. 
let's say you want, let's say worst case, let's say you wanted to make your um, app global. That's okay too, but break it down step by step because this, you wanna be realistic. You don't wanna have such a heavy weight on you to try to get this goal. Break it down step by step. Once you achieve that goal, maybe make a bigger range goal. And so two, choose consistency over speed. Let's say you really want to learn a language. Don't rush it. Choose consistency because it's better if it takes more time, but you're better at coding at that language, right? And three, avoid burnout and get rest. So for me, I'm guilty of this because um, like on days where I don't have school and I have a lot of time and I code, I'll code from like 1 p.m. to 3 a.m. And I really regret it because I'll end up being like super tired. So one thing, and I stress this, avoid burnout and get rest. Don't, it's okay to code for a long time, but don't let that, um, don't let that uh, get into the way of other things such as your sleep and your health. And then four, find a community of others to learn with. There's a bunch of coding groups out there, virtual and in person. And in, um, later on, I'll be giving you guys a community of other people, like on Discord groups or Reddit groups that you can have like, to have a supportive community that's also learning coding with you. And then five, stay curious and keep it fun. Coding is supposed to be something that's supposed to be fun to you. If it's not, then, you know, but stay curious because coding always has different aspects to it. There's no coder out there or programmer out there that knows coding 100%. It's impossible. The world is always expanding. The world is always advancing. And so just stay curious and keep it fun. Yeah. So three, now we're going to be going over the best methods of learning how to code. So first, um, before we get into the different type of learners you could possibly be, the only way you can actually learn how to code is by actually doing it, rather than just simply seeing or hearing the code. When I say this, I mean like you can't, you can't maybe like, say you wanna watch 10 YouTube videos on how to code, but you're not actually coding, you're not gonna take in anything. You must do, when it comes to coding, you must do in order to learn. So first I'm gonna be going over the three types of learners you may be and the best way to approach it in terms of coding. And this applies to self-studying. So if you're a visual learner, so people who find visuals such as videos and graphics as the most beneficial way to learn, an auditory learner, people who find information that they can hear to be the best way to learn, and kinesthetic, people who learn the best by actually doing it and getting hands-on experience. So I suggest if you're a visual learner, you watch YouTube videos. And later on, I'll be giving you a couple of YouTubers that um, have the best videos for beginners. For auditory, I really suggest you start listening to podcasts because podcasts are good. If you're auditory, it might be easier for you to hear code rather than see it. So yeah. And then this third one, this, even though this applies to kinesthetic learners, I suggest this for anyone. If you're a visual auditory, you, this is something you must do. Learn as you code. You can't, you can't watch a bunch of videos or hear a bunch of things and not actually do it, right? Then technically you don't really know how to code, but you kind of know how it works, right? So I really suggest that you learn as you code and take courses online or even in person, but I just put online for now because we're in a pandemic, but yeah. And so now I'll give you guys a different resources to start coding. So for top coding programming programs and courses, so Coursera is a really popular one. It has tons of courses that range from beginner level coding to advanced level. And there's also Skillshare that has a course called Coding for Beginners. And this course introduces students to common coding concepts like bugs, pseudocode, and how code runs. And then Udemy has a course called um, Coding for Beginners with Blue Line Learning Solutions. And this kind of just touches on the basics of five different programming languages, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, HTML, and CSS, which are both known as the beginner programming languages. And so the top interactive learning websites, codecademy.com. And this is where I started coding actually. Um, I started coding HTML, CSS from this website. So I really highly recommend this one specifically. And codecademy.com provides tutorials on a range of different languages. And just so you know, interacti interactivity improves speed of learning. And there's also free freedcodecamp.org. And this provides step-by-step -step courses starting from beginner level to advanced levels. And then W3 Schools, which is a, another one I highly recommend too. And this one contains a variety of different learning and has many exercises after learning a different concept. So you're also like reading the content, but you're also able to test it out and make sure that you're able to get onto the next step. And then code.org, which I feel like is the, one of the best places to start as well. So it teaches you how to block code different games regard, regardless of your grade slash educational level. And block code is like the coding before you actually start coding. It kind of just breaks it down for you. So you can kind of understand the fundamentals of coding before you actually get into a language. So I highly recommend that one as well. And so um, the top beginner YouTube channels I recommend are Treehouse, which is a learning resource that provides different types of information and tutorials, 
in coding from beginner to advanced levels of coding. And the other YouTube channel I recommend is learncode.academy, one of the most popular YouTube channels that provide a ton of resources regarding mostly web development. And the top podcasts I recommend are Coding Newbie, which interviews a new guest every week and um, teaches you how to learn coding. And then two, Shop Talk Show, which talks mostly about front end development and interviews top developers. So once I really successful, like maybe like in um, Google, Facebook from like the top tier companies um, and then Software Engineering Daily, which provides an excellent source of technical information. Um, developer T, which talks about building healthy relationships with clients, preparing for interviews and networking. So this could be like, let's say I'm applying for a job as a software engineer at maybe a tech startup. So this kind of help you, helps you prepare on how to network, um, how to uh, get interviews. And obviously you need it. Building healthy relationships with clients is a very important aspect of having a job or even just working with people in general. So, yeah. And so just to let you guys know, I'll be providing a free resource sheet created by myself. So make sure to stay to the end of the workshop. Um, and so next is finding your starting point. Everyone's starting point is going to be different. So I'm just going to break it down step by step because you might be thinking, now that I know all this information, what do I do with it, right? So I'm going to break it down, like say after this workshop you want to start. I'm going to tell you how. So first, you have to find your language. So when I say find your language, um, I would say, so after this, so I'm gonna be going over the beginner languages, but let's say I'm not a beginner. Let's say I'm just looking for a language. What language should I learn next? So for me, how I got into iOS app development. So I knew I wanted to create an app that had a great impact. And I feel like more people use iOS um, phones than Android phones. So I said, hey, you know, it'd be great if I learned iOS app development. And the truth is, is that iOS app development, even though I learned no Swift 5 from it, there's other languages that you can code for iOS apps. You can use Flutter, uh, which is another um, language you can look into later. And it just really just depends on your preference. So this kind of goes back to finding your why, right? Why do I want to learn how to code? And then let that initiative kind of help you decide what language you're going to learn next. And then two, decide the resources you're going to predominantly use. When you start coding, don't use like 15 different resources at the same time. It can kind of cause you to get a little overwhelmed really easily and stuff. And it's just not a really good thing. So I would say maybe focus on two specific resources that you refer to the most, and then maybe go into other resources if necessary. Let's say that resource doesn't include that information. And then three, creating a coding schedule determining on how often you'll code. And this goes back to the goal hierarchy. How, uh, based on how the position of um, coding on my goal hierarchy, how much time am I gonna put into it? Like for example, for me, I code a lot. So I kind of put a lot of time into it every day, but again, it's different for everyone. And then four, downloading a coding editor. So a coding editor is a text space where you're able to actually code. And so every coding editor is gonna be different based on your language. And so let's say I was to code in Python, it'd be like maybe PyTorch or HTML, there'd be Visual Studio Code. And after this one, actually, I'm gonna be going over a couple editors that will be going over um, the best uh, text editors for if you're learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which are the beginner languages. But first, you're probably wondering, wait, what's HTML, what's CSS, and what is JavaScript? So first, the top three beginner languages. So HTML5, so first, what does it stand for? So it stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And so two, it can be used to write web, applica web applications. So HTML5 is a predominantly used language that's used for making websites. And then three, describes the structure of information on a web page. So in a sense, it's kind of like the back end of a website. It's the one that's kind of deciding the decisions behind the code. And then four, it works together with CSS and JavaScript, which I'll be getting into next. And then CSS, what does it stand for? So it stands for cascading style sheets. Two. It provides flexibility and interactivity to web applications. Three, describes the presentation of web pages such as colors, fonts, and et cetera. And when I say this, basically CSS is the design part of HTML. HTML is kind of the one deciding where, what goes where, but CSS is the one that kind of makes it appealing to users that come into the web application. And then four, it works together with HTML and JavaScript. And then next, um, JavaScript, what is that, right? So one, it allows you to implement different features and animations to a web page. And then two, if you've heard of Java before, just to make this clear, JavaScript is not the same as Java. And then three, it incorporates different elements to web pages that engage more users. And four, it works both with HTML and CSS. 
And so now I'm going to be going over the top three text editors that apply to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And for let me just make this clear, for every language, it's different. Like, for example, I'm learning or I know how to code in iOS app development. The language or the text editor for that is Xcode, right? For Python, it may be PyTorch. For Java, it might be IntelliJ. It's going to be different based on the language you decide. So when you decide, to, when you finally pick your language, make sure to look up the text editor specified for it. But here I'm just giving the top three text editors that are mainly used for the beginner languages. So the first one is known as Visual Studio Code, and this can be downloaded on either Windows or Mac. It doesn't matter which um, computer you have. Uh, Sublime Text and Atom, and all of these are free. What about Chromebooks? Um, say that again? What about Chromebooks? Like oh, Chromebooks as well, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so now that I kind of went over everything, so I'll be going over the questions everyone provided beforehand. And I'll be answering any additional questions you guys can also speak, or you can put it in the chat as well. So first, how are you certain that a degree in computer science was for you? So I'm in high school, so I'm not really necessarily in college yet, but I know I want to major in computer science later. And how I found that out was, so I've been coding since age eight and I'm about 16 right now. I've been coding for a long time and I've never gotten bored of it. It's just something that I've stayed loving to do. And when you're picking a career, you have to make sure that you're gonna love it for a long period of time, right? And so that's kind of how I just know that I'm gonna major in computer science later on. But obviously it can change, right? But that's my goal. Um, next one. What should we do after this workshop to continue down our path of computer science learning? Um, after, so I gave you guys a step-by-step -step guide. And so after this workshop, so again, you would find your language, find the predominant resources you're going to use. Um, you would also like find the right coding editor for you. And uh, you can always go back and see what steps I gave, so. And then, Three, what empowers you to keep forward in coding? Is it challenging at times? The truth is it can be challenging at times. Again, I'm in high school. So, you know, sometimes course low can kind of um, overweigh me. And then like, it's kind of hard to find time to code and I'll get, maybe I'll be like exhausted, be like I'll do it the next day. But the thing that kind of really like empowers me to code no matter what, it's just reminding myself of my goals. Like I know what my intentions are for the future. So I say, hey, you know, you're gonna do this, right? So just do it, right? You know, I don't know, it's really self-gratifying when you decide to, I don't know, code rather than maybe watching Netflix or something. So, yeah. Um, four, how did you come up with your idea for the Congressional App Challenge? Okay, so the, first of all, um, the Congressional App Challenge is a national competition. Um, you can submit apps, websites, uh, basically anything. And so um, my idea for the Congressional App Challenge was a um, iOS application called Help for Med. And so Help for Med is a mental health and networking platform that connects healthcare workers with one another and also provides mental health assistance between them. And so how I kind of came up with this idea was kind of like uh, weird or it was kind of like unexpected because so when the competition came around, I was very confused about what I was going to do. I was like researching things that would maybe interest me and I just couldn't find it. And so it was kind of odd, like, so I was just doing chores and my parents, they love CNN, right? So obviously the Chris Cuomo primetime show is playing. And so I saw Chris Cuomo talking about the lack of mental health resources for, um, for um, healthcare workers. And I was, I never knew about this too, because I thought it was so crazy that hey, um, all these doctors, nurses are checking up on me. Are you okay? But no one ever asks the same question back. And especially since we're in a pandemic now, it's kind of really hard for them to get the mental health awareness they need. And even the same thing for medical school, medical school students too. People know medical school is hard, but do they really think about the people inside the medical schools? How are they feeling? How do, how, what are they going through? So I feel like my app was a, like a voice to them and that's really what motivated me to do my app on that. And so, yeah. Um, what is the best way and best platform to start a website without coding? Um, without coding, I'm aware of a few, uh, not too many. I'm aware of uh, Wix.com, uh, Weebly, WordPress, but I'm pretty sure WordPress is not uh, really free either because there's like plugins you have to um, like buy in order to like incorporate into your website and stuff. Um, those are just a couple I know. I'm not really too informed about that. Um, how did you learn iOS app development and what resources did you use? Um, so how I learned iOS app development, so I started with this YouTuber, his name was 
um, code with Chris, and he really just broke down like the stuff you need to know about iOS app development, the things that you will run into when you're coding in iOS app development. And he also provided like simple projects like an app, um, a card game. And so I kind of started there. And then from then on to learn, I kind of just went for it. Like I told myself, you know, I'm just going to learn as I code. And honestly, I feel like for me personally, I'm going to give this to you as a personal advice, but um, I would say the best way to learn is just do it. Like if you want to code an iOS app, just literally just do it. Because what I did, I just started coding the app. And if I had any questions, I might've looked it up and I tried to like ingrain that into my brain. So I wouldn't have to look it up again. And that was the best way for me, but obviously it can be different for anyone else. Um, next question. As a college freshman, how do I continue studying code? Any programs to recommend? Um, so as your college, there may be uh, coding classes that you could take. And if not, some of the, uh, I mentioned some courses that you could take online, which are uh, Coursera or Skillshare or Udemy, um, and any programs to recommend. Uh, I recommend I would recommend Coursera, um, Coursera because I heard it's like a really I haven't used it before personally, but I know a lot of people that have used it, and I feel like it's a really great source to um, continue studying code. Um, for seventh grade, is it better to wait to um, to get familiar with algebra before start before starting to code? So. Just start, I would say just start coding because I was literally eight when I started coding. So, and obviously I didn't know algebra, right? And so, um, yeah, I would say just get into it. Um, and I'm guessing eventually when you start learning algebra, you'll be able to incorporate those aspects. But I feel like you definitely don't need it for a beginner level um, of you don't need algebra yet. So I would say just start. Um, next, what do I do to advance after I've learned the basis of a language? So after you learn the basics of a language, I'd recommend this the most, take on projects. Projects are the best way to learn and gain that repetition when it comes to coding, because repetition is a really important aspect of coding. And then you can also, so um, I might put this in the chat, this is a website called hackerearth.com. And it has like uh, many challenges you can do to like, maybe it will say like um, create a program that multiplies a number by two on a loop maybe. Like it kind of gives you those challenges and it like tests you. And I feel like it's a really good thing to use when you're want to advance in language. So I'll quickly put that in the chat so you can refer to it. Okay, as of now, I can't really access the chat, but I'll do it at the end, I swear. Um, okay, next question what to be when I grow up, maybe have some options at hand. Um, so yeah, I gave a six careers in the beginning of the workshop, but honestly, what you wanna be when you grow up is depending on you. Let's say you're really interested in business and computer science. Maybe you wanna incorporate, you have to do the research and find what job might be the right one for you. It really just depends on your own research too, because it's really just a preference. Maybe we could all major in computer science right now, but we can go into different jobs. Like it doesn't have to be the same title. It doesn't have to be the typical software engineer. It could be like a pro um, product design. It could be different things. So I would recommend doing your own research on your preferences. And then um, the internet's a great thing. So there should be like some options there out for you. Um, how do I learn how to code on my own? So earlier I gave a couple of resources where you can start learning how to code. And if you're a beginner, I recommend so you go in the order of HTML, CSS and JavaScript because they all build up on one another. And so, um, yeah, and to add on to that question, how can I become better on coding and what resources are the best for doing this? So the best way you can, you can get better at coding is you can't get better overnight. You have to practice it. Repetition is key. And the best resources, so for me personally, just in general, I felt like the best resource for me was W3 Schools, which is in the resource document I'm going to give you guys, along with Code Academy. Um, and then, what are some good habits to do while coding? So, some good habits. So, I would say once you figure out the language you're learning, this has saved me a lot of time. Um, let's say I'm learning Swift, right? So, look up Xcode keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts will save you, I'm telling you, it will save your fingers. Like, so that's something, a really good habit you should have. And like, when you go into computer science jobs too, you'll see them talk, typing fast, doing all of this stuff and you wanna be aware of that, right? Um, yeah. And then how long every day do you spend coding? What is the best way to improve your coding skills? So improve your coding skills, I would say repetition. 
Um, and one thing I would say, because this is one thing I had a problem with early on in my coding journey, is so once I got comfortable in one area, I would stay in that area. Don't stay in that area. You have to, when it comes to coding, you have to get out of your comfort zone just a little bit. So I would, um, if you're really good at one spot, try to expand it to the other. Don't get too comfortable, you know? Um, and then how long every day do I spend coding? Well, okay. So during school time, I spend about five hours coding because I'm a iOS app developer somewhere and I'm also working on my own project. And so it's kind of hard sometimes though, cause I have school as well, but that's the time I put in. And then outside of school, it's really bad, which is why I said avoid burnout, but I probably code like from like afternoon to morning sometimes. Don't do that, but that's how long I spend most of the time. Um, how to upskill and get practice with coding. Um, I would say the best way to get practice with coding is again, taking on projects. And then let's say you're learning coding, right? I would recommend using Code Academy again because it has a lot of interactivity. So it's how that works is that it might tell you to do one thing and then you have to do it in order to pass on. So it's almost like a course in a sense, but not really, but it kind of teaches you step-by-step -step on how to code, like actually learning the content and actually doing it. So um, did coding come easy to you? So when I first started at age eight, um, I would say coding didn't really come easy to me, but it didn't really come hard as well. I was just kind of like, if you with it, there'd be days where I get the concepts, they make sense. And there'd be days where I'm like, what is this? I'll do it, I'll do it tomorrow or something like that. And so in the beginning, it was it was iffy, but now because I practice it so much, um, coding does come easy to me, but there's always those moments, no matter who you are, a programmer, you'll get into those bugs that you can't fix. Maybe it takes you like three days to figure it out. And so, and that's like applies to every quarter, so. Um, I would love to learn more about the best resources for beginners and how to preserve, preserve through when different areas become challenging. So when, so the best res resources for beginners, I've mentioned it again, Code Academy, uh, Free Code Camp, W3 Schools, just a lot, and I'll give it to you guys later. Um, and how did I preserve when different areas became challenging? So I just kind of, it could be, it gets really frustrating sometimes when you can't get a bug, but I would say, don't leave it, stay in your chair and figure it out. Because like one time I had a bug with one of my projects and then I was like, oh my God, I can't. And I was like, I stopped for like five days and it was like the worst decision of my life. Cause I was just like scared of it. And then when I came back, it took me like five minutes. Cause sometimes you just need that rest, that refresh in the brain to really get that bug. So I would say when Iris became challenging, I just kept on just try your best to do it. It's a practice too. It's not something that's done overnight. So just try to push yourself to fix that issue. But if it's taking you so long and you have other other um, commitments, obviously leave it, but when you can solve it as fast as you can. Um, and then are there any like supportive communities? So like I said, there's Discord groups and Reddit groups, and I'll be providing a couple in um, the resource sheet in a second, but obviously the ones I gave are not the only ones out there. Um, I wish we were in person, you could probably, there's probably like some coding groups like in your local community, but um, yeah. And I feel like, yeah, so. Um, what are coding, coding avenues that incorporate a more creative or artistic approach? So when it comes to coding, there's like three types of developing, I would say. There's full stack, which deals with front end and back end. And so what is front end and back end, right? Front end is like the part that kind of designs the application that structures the application while the back end is kind of uh, behind the functionality of it. And so uh, so some coding avenues that incorporate a more creative art artistic approach, I would say are the front end developing. So I would suggest, or even like UI slash UX designers like are doing the more artistic and creative approach. So I would suggest looking into that. What are good resources that I can use to get started with coding? Um, so based on the type of learner you are, uh, let's say you're a visual learner, I would say like YouTube videos along with also doing the code would be great if you're like an auditory learner, like listening to podcasts uh, and doing the code are gonna be really helpful. Um, yeah, and I gave a couple of resources earlier and those are the ones that I feel best. And in the resource sheet, there's also additional, additional resources that I did not even mention. So you have some to look at from there. Um, is there anything you wish you knew before you started your coding journey? Um, 
the first thing I wish I knew is, okay, so when you look up code on Google Images and you see all of that, like lines, it's like, what is that? How am I supposed to do that, right? But the truth is, is that coding is a lot easier as it's easier than it seems. So don't get scared of it. Cause I was really scared of it when I first started, but my cousin, she's like, no, you must learn this. So I was like, okay. So I did it, but um, yeah, it's not as scary as it seems. So that's something I wish I knew. Um, what would be the first step to do when you first learn um, coding? For example, what apps, programs, websites should I use to learn? So again, I gave resources earlier, but what first step you should take when you're learning how to code is first determining your language. So if you're, if you're a beginner, I recommend against HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But let's say you're like maybe intermediate or advanced. So I would say first decide the language you're going to learn and then find your predominant resources. And then, um, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's like the best way to start in coding. Um, so those are all the questions I have listed here. Uh, so let me know if you guys have any more questions in the chat. Oh, the chat has some juicy content. Okay, let's see. Um, let me scroll up to the top. Um, what are some coding programs, boot camps available to high schoolers? So I'm pretty sure a lot of universities, whether you're like in person or um, virtual, there's a lot of coding programs they have you can apply to. Um, boot camp. So I earlier I recommended uh, freecodecamp.org. And it's not necessarily like a coding camp, but it's kind of like structured as one in a sense, because like how it starts off, it's like HTML, you must go through all these HTML courses in order to advance to CSS. And another coding program is Coursera, which I mentioned earlier, which is really good for that. Kinesthetic learners rise up. Yes, I, I'm in that group. So let's go. Um, are these coding sites good for elementary age kids as well? I mean, definitely they can start from there, but the one that I recommend for elementary age kids as well, which I feel like works really well, is um, code.org. Um, at my school, um, I'm the president of uh, a club called Girls Can Code, and we've taught elementary schools how to code using code.org. And it's been really helpful. It's actually sparked a lot of their interest in coding. So I would recommend, I'll put that in the chat really quickly. Code.org is, I would say, one of the best ways to start for high schoolers. Um, next one. Oh yeah, I recommend Scratch, um, Scratch as well. I use that in a computer course I took as a sophomore and it's really helpful, so. Could you talk more about your experience with competition slash challenges? Of course. Um, so the first ever coding related competition I've entered was the Congressional App Challenge, which I talked about earlier and um, so maybe some advice I can give. So I actually ended up winning that challenge. So I would say, let's say you were to enter any competitions or challenges, don't do a typical idea. Find an idea that stands out and present it in a way that uh, intrigues an audience, I would say. Um, and then another competition I entered in November of last year. So it's called the uh, Hack for the Future, um, it's a Hack for the Future hackathon. And this is hosted actually by MIT and crazily I ended up winning. And so I would say the, my experience with that was really cool. I got to meet some, cause I won with a team of people and it was a great experience just getting to know other people learning from their experiences as coders. And so for that competition, some advice I would give, cause it was like a coding slash pitch kind of competition. Like you had to have a coding idea, kind of apply it and then present it to a group of judges that come from other universities. And so the best way I would say is um, make, if you were to enter a hackathon like that, make your pitch very um, intriguing, hit them with the numbers. So I'm like, this amount of people have been affected. Um, this has happened. Uh, what else? I would say, don't be afraid to ask advice of others. Let's say like I was with a team of like seven people, but I also asked my personal friends, hey, what do you think of this? What advice do you think would be best? So don't be afraid to um, ask questions, even to the people at the judge, because at most hackathons, there's mentors and we use mentor, we heavily use that resource. So I'd recommend that as well. How do you find time to code while balancing academics, extracurriculars and sleep? Um, how I find time to code is by staying up late at night, but don't do that. I would say, um, I would say kind of decide how much time you're gonna put into each single day. Let's say you have maybe an English and history assignment due tomorrow at midnight. Um, I would say like, maybe I'm a lot four hours in the afternoon to work on that. And then maybe 
and I'm in basketball too. So let's say I have basketball from four to six and then later from six on I'll code. So I would sit, recommend to structure your time is to actually make a calendar and structure it. Say like tomorrow's Monday. Maybe you can say from this time to this time, I'm doing this. From this time to this time, I'm doing this. Google Calendar and Apple Calendar are great things to use. I use them and it's really helps with my time management and also finding time for yourself as well because that's very important. Are any of your apps published on the App Store? Not currently, but I'm planning to release Help for Med in early March. I'm currently working on the uh, the UI design because I answered the competition. I like the functionality and everything, but I didn't like how it looks. I'm just trying to quickly um, restructure that before I publish. And then Hacks Club is a good. What are some good languages to do for fun or for taking into consideration for maybe some career opportunities? Um, I would actually say iOS app development because um, what do you call it? It's very interesting. It's always expanding because it doesn't have to be like an like an like a phone. It could be um, maybe like an Apple TV or maybe your Apple Watch. It's very like flexible. Um, what other language? I would say um, Python's really cool because um, once you learn the basics of Python, it's really good for machine learning. And what machine learning learning really is is like um, let's say uh, I'm creating an iOS app and I want to include maybe a chat bot that would be able to answer their questions without like, um, without actually like having to set it up, this question, this question, this question, exactly, right? The machine will kind of like learn, learn the user, kind of learn the input that's coming in and kind of take that in for, uh, it's with machine learning, the machine's learning basically, you know, it's taking in that content. And so Python's a good one. Java also, cause that's also good for machine learning. I feel like that's really cool. Um, honestly, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as well, because you can make really cool websites with that. So after learning HTML, CSS, and JS, what language should you learn next? Um, again, this is based on your preference. What? So this is a question that's going to be based on you. It's not something that, like, after I learned these languages, like, you must learn this language. Now you've kind of expanded your options. Now it's going to be based on your preferences. Let's say I want to make a robot. Let's say maybe you're going to learn Python and Java to uh, learn that machine learning. Let's say I wanna make, um, I don't know, I mean like a program. You can also learn, you can also like kind of make initiatives for yourself. So let's say I wanted to make like help for med, like I already have help for med, right? And I have that on my iOS application. You can learn other languages to expand on that. So I have iOS application. What about for the people who have Androids? Oh, maybe I should learn Java so I can do Android app development. Oh, what if I wanna make a website for it as well? I can learn HTML, CS, and JavaScript. So you can kind of base the languages you learn off of what you want to do as well. Um, what other jobs outside of primarily technology slash programming would find pro coding useful? What language is most popular nowadays in your opinion? Um, find useful. I would say, so I could be wrong, but I feel like maybe the language, uh, the language that would be best or most useful um, or the job, I would say maybe like business because business, when you're doing business, you need other aspects. You need that uh, techno technological approach. You might need a website or um, an iOS application for that. And so, yeah. Uh, could you please put the link in the chat where she said you're gonna put? Oh, right. I need to give you guys the resource sheet. That's important. Give me one quick second. Okay, I'll put in the link right now on the chat. Okay, what's your experience with competitive coding algorithm related competitions? So to be truthful with you, probably my only experience is um, uh, the Congressional App Challenge and the MIT Hackathon, but I'm really looking open to getting into more competitions. So um, can you tell us more about what hackathons are? Oh, and how they might be a good starting point for beginners. So hackathons are, it can range from like 24 hour to maybe 72 hour competitions or like one day to three day competitions. And so what they are, so you're kind of like under a time period where you have to create a solution. And based on the hackathon, uh, they can have different themes. Let's say you're doing um, an application for I don't know, air pollution. So people would have to make a program. It doesn't matter if it's an app, a website, it could be anything. Uh, based on that solution. And there would be judges that would evaluate these projects and kind of like give awards based on those projects. Um, 
yeah and how they may be a good starting point for beginners yeah it's a really good starting point for beginners because at hackathons you can like find groups to work with and those groups when like when you're I feel like when you're more collaborative with other people it's actually a faster way to learn if someone's being like teaching you or you're teaching it to someone else in a sense too and so uh yeah most beginners welcome be, uh, or most hackathons welcome beginners no matter what because hackathons once you get into the practice of going to them you start to learn more you start to learn more about your options based on other people's experiences so it's a really great experience even if you don't know how to code and it looks like that's the last question um I'll wait like two more minutes. Maybe you guys have additional questions. And then, yeah. Or maybe there's anything you want to learn more about, anything I've done or anything like that. It would be nice. I can see some of you guys are going on the document for resources. And this will also go into um, the post workshop email. So don't be stressed if you can't like get into the link or anything, so. So yeah, it looks like I'm not gonna get any more questions. Um, so I'm gonna go to the next slide. And so uh, I just wanna thank everyone for coming. Um, oh, two new messages, okay. So what type of classes are you taking in high school? Um, so related to coding, or I would say, I was just gonna list my STEM related courses, I would say. So I'm taking um, AP Physics, AP Calc, I'm taking IB Computer Science. Um, and yeah, those are kind of like the STEM related courses I'm taking right now. And I would say if you're trying to, let's say you're like a freshman or a sophomore here and you're trying to get into, um, and you want to major into like computer science or a STEM related major, I recommend taking your STEM related classes at your at your high school. Do you know any of any Northern California hackathons? Another virtual right now, good for beginners. There's actually a ton here. I'm gonna put a website. It has like, it's all, there's hackathons all the time there, virtual and in person. And so this is actually where, um, this is where, or never mind. but uh, yeah, this is a really good website. Let me make sure I put that in right, because I don't know if it's a .com. It is, but yeah, that's a really great one, so. And then, yeah, if you have any post-workshop questions or need specific advice for you, you can contact me on any of these 